Support for Steppin' Out is made possible by local author Serata Bonnet. In Notes of Forgiveness, Bonnet shares her childhood story as daughter of famed rockabilly singer Sherry Davis. Notes of Forgiveness, available in bookstores and at serratabonnet.com. I'm Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Errol Laborde, carnival historian and author of Mardi Gras Chronicles of the New Orleans Carnival, here for his annual Mardi Gras review. Hey, E. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and Poppy Tucker, host of the WWNO radio program, Louisiana Eats. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hi, Peg. Hi. And we're so glad he's with us, jazz guitarist and banjoist and band leader, all right, Seva Vinay, here to discuss his new CD and to perform with his Storyville String Band a little bit later tonight. Good to see you, sir. Thank Hello. you. Nice to be here. And theater critic Alan Smason, editor of the Crescent City Jewish News. Hello, Mr. Allen. Hi there. But first up, Miss Puppy. Well, you know, I hate to be the first to say this, but Mardi Gras is over, Peggy. <laughs> Sniff, I, it's, sniff. So it's time for everybody to sober up. <laughs> and I've got a great suggestion about the sober up. There is the most adorable espresso bar called Solo Espresso Bar. It's on Poland Avenue. How things have changed in this world. Imagine in, in a raised house like this, suddenly a little coffee shop pops up in what would have been the basement once upon a time. The owner is Lauren Morlock, and they are doing some fantastic things over there. Now, for one thing, on Saturdays, Saturday afternoons from 2 till 6, they're having a pop-up every week. And every week, it's some other kind of delicious food. But her espresso is great. She's got beautiful pastries. It's a really intimate, charming spot. You would feel like you're in somebody's basement hangout, actually, because I guess you are. And our last photo that we've got... This is, Aww. the coffee's so good, this is what it can do to you there. Can you, I walk in the door, there's the mutt. But anyway, he <laughs> loves the espresso. Now, moving on to new fantastic things. This last week, Elan Shia got his new Israeli restaurant, Shia, opened up on Magazine Street. And of course, this is a new partnership that he's in with John Besh. It's in the old Dominique's on Magazine Street, the big one. And there's oh. Elan with his great new toy. We've seen these uh, pizza ovens. Well, this is a pita oven. And oh. they're baking fresh pita continuously. And the dining room's been changed around. It's not nearly as formal and sort of modern art as it was and at the bar are they doing some great things they've got house made soft drinks that also you can turn into cocktails like that was one of my favorites it was a combo between strawberry and rose water it was very beautiful now everybody loves grape leaves I love them but there they're served hot stuffed with brisket mm -hmm. and shiitake mushrooms Oh goodness, mm. that was delicious. The hot pita arrives at your table. Mm. Be careful not to burn yourself on the steam inside. And may I suggest hummus? Well, that's what uh. Elan calls the breakfast hummus, which has a soft cooked egg. Eggs. It's exquisite. Also, they have it with curried, fr fried, curried fried cauliflower or eggplant. Delicious. Then the shakshuka. Oh, that's a wonderful dish. <laughs> Sun chokes, spicy chilies, tomato and egg. There's fab things to share, like baba ganoush, heirloom carrots, pickled veggies, a paddlefish caviar spread. And it's a great deal. This is very affordable. You get three for $9, five for $15, nine for $21. Don't forget the lovely matzo ball soup that Elan makes. You could go just for that for lunch. And please, under and look at the desserts. Please understand, though, that this is not like Mona's. This is not another Mediterranean restaurant. It's truly Israeli, where all of those various Jewish countries, communities have come together. So you see some Polish food, you see some of everything, but see it, go there. It is great. So 
That, and then I also wanted to tell everybody in the listening audience that the John Besh and Jessica Bride Chef's Move applications are open for that incredible scholarship. It's open now. The deadline is March the 31st. It's very easy to apply. They've got two full scholarships, one in culinary arts and one in pastry arts. This gives you a nine-month career program as well as housing, uniforms, travel, a computer, and oh my goodness, the, what has happened with the folks who came out of this? That was, um, for instance, Serena Johnson, the first recipient. She's at Cafe Adelaide now. They're all over the place. There's one working what with David Slater. It's fantastic, and they even, this really impresses me, and I want everybody to understand this. It's not just African-American applicants. It is ethnic, anybody. So consequently, they have graduated their first Hispanic graduate, and they've had a Vietnamese graduate. Her name is Tron, and when she graduated, she's already opened up her own cake and dessert salon called Chasing Wong after she graduated at the top of her pastry class. So Wonderful. really and truly good news. Go to Chef's Move, apply if you can. Thank you so much. And we turn to our on Yes E. We have moved past uh, Ash Wednesday, but you know, there were some special things that happened uh, this past carnival season. Give us the overview, Ken. We should acknowledge it was a good carnival. No parade was rained out, even though it was a little dicey toward the end, um, especially on Monday night when uh, when uh, uh, Proteus and Orpheus had to race the rain. And, and the, the weather Mardi Gras, especially in the morning, wasn't great. But the parades rolled, and, and, and it was good. Um, and so overall, and you know, the longer the parade season is, the longer the odds are that somebody's going to be rained out along the way. Anyway, we, we have some images uh, to show you. Uh, one is the Knights of Chaos, which is the uh, heir to the old moments parade that you know did satire. And this was something um, on the corner. I think a lot of people just missed this, but just Sweet Charlie. And uh, because in reference to the right, incident, of course, uh, uh, the satirical in magazine Paris. in, in yeah. Paris where the explosion was, or, or the invasion, and of course this is like a, a satirical parade saluting a satirical magazine. I thought that was uh, um, touching. Uh, the next is from Endymion, and Endymion. This was Endymion's new thing this year. Every year they're coming up with something new and something visual, and this is what they call ETV, Endymion Television, <laughs> where they actually had cameras on there and people could look at themselves back there and that was their final flow and every year they're coming up with something bigger and, and, and that, was, that was a nice touch i've always thought that carnival parades needed something more at the back end of the parade and so i think that was good orpheus parade the uh, orpheus parade i remember when orpheus first started they said we're not going to have kings uh, we're more of a democratic thing this year they had I think like eight celebrity monarchs, okay? And so they got more kings than anybody else. But, but this was uh, Luke Bryan and, and, and leading the Orpheus Parade. Orpheus really had a beautiful parade. And too bad it had to, uh, to race the weather a little bit. It started about an hour and a half earlier. But that Monday night, the combination of Proteus and Orpheus are two of the most beautiful parades. So beautiful. And both of them mm -hmm. had to hurry, but this is a good example. And of course, Dirk Bentley was also there too. But that is just gorgeous, <laughs> just absolutely gorgeous. And the Leviathan, that was really a surprise, how the Leviathan, they've made that even fancier. Yeah, let me correct, that was Dirk Bentley. Yeah, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there. yeah. Uh, the, the Leviathan has been one of uh, Orpheus' signature floats, and this year they added more lighting to it and just made mm -hmm. it bigger and better. Now, crew d'etat, once again, uh, satirical, huh? But crew d'etat, the uh, one theme, you know, people don't have Ray Nagin to kick around anymore, and so <laughs> I, was, you know, I was wondering where the satire was going to go. And looking at the parades that did satire, one of the more common themes was uh, the street condition. Mm -hmm. A lot of people went after that and teased that. And here is uh, Le, Le Cru d'Etat. Even Mayor Landrieu satirized the street conditions at, at Lundy Gras. So this was something that was in people's mm -hmm. minds. Mm -hmm. Muses, I've always loved the walking elements to muses. Uh, a lot of walking groups in here, the people with, with the famous uh, muses shoe. This is one of the, the more amusing groups that started over the, I guess it's technically not a, uh, a walking group, it's a lying down group, it's called the Lace Boys. And they have lazy boy chairs, which, is, which are motorized. And here is uh, Lundy Gras' uh, Rex arrival. He arrived by train for the first time this year. And then here's one of the great moments in, in, in Mardi Gras, when Rex, the mayor, and Zulu get together and they boogie together and they have fun together. 
And that becomes sort of like the, the ceremonial beginning. And of the even Royal though run. we miss um, uh, Boatner Riley, his son uh, continued with the Royal Run. And this is on the morning yeah. of Mardi Gras. The uh, uh, Rex and his queen always show okay. up. And Rex and his queen are right. always declared to be the winners. And special thanks to Judy Petoni, and, um, who took that photo, and also Justin Winston for those yeah, I wanted to qualify this. One of the great uh, things on, on Mardi Gras is the, uh, the Society of St. Anne. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of masks that came down. This year there was sort of a split between St. Anne and another group, so I'm not sure if that if that's St. Anne or the other group. Uh, <laughs> okay. but, but, but certainly the Maroney masking scene remains oh. wonderful. And now, though, from our Tuesday evening broadcast of the Rex Ball and the meeting of the courts, we have an excerpt where we show you the actual meeting of the courts. Let's take a look. Meeting of the courts of Rex and the Mystic Crew of Comus. It's edition dating back to 1882, and we're showing it to you live from New Orleans. And the captain of Comus himself, welcoming Rex. And now each monarch will get to visit with the other as we. This is beautifully choreographed year after year. Uh, this does this, most of this just doesn't change and, and likely won't. It's very graceful, carefully prepared. Uh, and rehearsed. Uh, Monday morning is a busy rehearsal day for the meeting of the courts. Everyone's getting in position for the Grand March. You know, since we started this broadcast, every year we fit that tradition. There was a great book that was written in the 1930s called The Mystic Crew by a man named uh, Perry Young. And Perry Young had this wonderful preface. And every year we've, uh, we've mentioned when uh, Henri was on the show, uh, Henri used to do it from, from memory, and no one can imitate the, uh, the passion in Henri's voice for doing it. So uh, I feel humbled to be reading it, but I think it's worthwhile. It says that Carnival is the butterfly of winter whose last mad flight of Mardi Gras forever ends his glory. Another season is the glory of another butterfly, and the tattered, scattered fragments of rainbow, of rainbow wings are in turn the record of his day. Beautiful analogy of the, uh, of the butterfly of winter. Now what that goes on to say is that when he talks about the, the rainbow wings and the tattered, scattered fragments is that there is so much to carnival. There are so many bits and pieces of it that the most anyone can ever hope to do is just collect fragments. But it does remind me, we have a very, very complex carnival, uh, very, very involved. There are other cities that stage carnivals. They may stage a parade or something, but, but ours is so interwoven. There's just so many elements to it. And so there are many fragments of rainbow wings scattered throughout. And special thanks, by the way, just a reminder, the DVD offers special thanks to everybody who was involved. But the DVD of the ball will be available for $35.95. And just call 486-5511 or go to WYS.org. And a special thanks to Dr. Stephen Hales, who was our co-commentator that night. And you saw the Monarchs, Christian Brown, Charlotte, Lainey Langenstein, and Patricia Barron. And now, though, it's time for Mr. Seven. And Seven, we're so glad you're here because you're kind of trying to keep the drive alive in the tradition in New Orleans of string bands. And you have a brand new CD, but tell us what's a string band. Well, there's, there's a few different definitions of what a string band is. Uh, originally, the, the string bands in the 1800s would be classified as string band if they had a violin as the lead instrument and probably a, a bass playing arco style with a bow and a guitar. Now, that band may have a trumpet, trombone, clarinet, and a piano in it, but it would still be considered a string band, which is synonymous for a dance band and what we now call a jazz band, except for with the violin as the lead melody instrument. Were well, you going to be a busy bee because you have two events coming up. Tell us about those. 
briefly? Uh -huh. Sure. Uh, Thursday, this coming Thursday, we'll be at the Pavilion of Two Sisters in City Park from 6 to 7.30 at their uh, weekly concert series, part of their weekly concert series. Uh -huh. And that'll be featuring Mr. Tommy Sancton and uh -huh. Mrs. Tanya Boutet. And then also on Saturday evening, I'll be playing with the great Dr. Michael White at Little Jim's Saloon. Very good. And you've been here. It seems like you've been here forever, but only since 1999. 99, huh? yes. Well, great. Tell us what your group's going to be playing for us tonight. Well, we're going to start off with a mazurka. Uh, it's going to be probably familiar to most of the uh, viewers. It's uh, a, a, our version of St. James Infirmary. And tell me who's in the band. Okay, it's uh, John Parker, the grandson of Doc Sushan. Uh, Tommy Sankton will be in the band, and Matt Rohde will be playing violin and, uh, and uh, mandolin, and Mr. Uh, Mark Brooks on bass, and myself on guitar. All right, guitar. great. And now, let's take a look. One, two, three, one, two. available online as well. And, but go to those events. We want to see some live music. There's also another CD called My Bayou Home, and the great Seb of a We're thrilled uh, that he and his group are here tonight. And New Orleans Magazine quiz queen Julia Street has a question for us. Last time, Christine Chatelaine gave us the name of the corner where the combos meet with a mambo beat and Mardi Gras mambo. And the group that recorded the most popular version 
version of that song, LaSalle and Rampart Street. And of course, we're talking about the Hot Cats. Now, tonight's question. One area bridge is named after a former governor. Another is named after a song written by a former governor. <laughs> what are they? Okay. Email your answers to steppingout at wyes.org. Our prize is a Louisiana Life magazine subscription. The book, Mardi Gras Chronicles of the New Orleans Carnival by Errol Laborde and published by Pelican. Thank you, Pelican. New Orleans music composer, pianist Kevin George's CD, Piano Reflections, available through iTunes and CD baby.com a gift certificate for two courtesy of Vianne's Tea House offering their culinary and gourmet tea experience and tonight we have a t-shirt is wor worn by Burke Bischoff with the message life is beautiful mm. <laughs> and also a dish tile doll that's with the message I Mardi Gras from our friends at wearablevegetables.com and you can visit wyes.org for our online calendar and to see our lineup events also link to our wyes YouTube YouTube channel to view our program if you missed it. And now, though, on to Mr. Allen. Well, you know, as Errol pointed out in his book, uh, we have much to credit to theater for our carnival celebration, even popularizing the theme of If Ever I Cease to Love to Lydia Thompson, who was a very popular actress and singer. And so it's with some homage, if you will, to theater that I, I went out on the streets looking for theater connections to Mardi Gras. Uh, you know, I also serve as the narrator at Gallier Hall and occasionally toasting at uh, the Intercontinental Hotel as well for some of the parades and the, the crews. But this year was a little different because of the portico uh, piece falling down, which you can see in the upper right-hand corner, or uh, if you will, of the building, uh, that portion of the stands was declared off-limits this year, so we actually did our toasting on the other side of the street near Lafayette Square. But, um, you know, basically Mardi Gras is something like a moving theater, if you will. It's, it's not unlike us being on the street as the audience, the captain and officers, of course, being like the directors and assistant directors, and the floats moving stages with, of course, the moving bands uh, being uh, the orchestra. So uh, one special couple I did see was the mayor, of course, the photo. Honorable Mayor Mitch Landrew and his lovely wife Cheryl, the First Lady. Uh, they, of course, did all their planning with the mayor's uh, Mardi Gras Task Force Advisory Chair, Sonny Borey, who also happens to be the captain of Orpheus. That was at the Orpheus Escapade. He does a lot of work with Scott Hutchinson, who does great behind-the-scenes work as well at uh, Mardi Gras. I wanted to also mention at the Orpheus Escapade, I got to see Manuel Ponce, his wife, uh, Denise. Uh, Manuel's responsible for these incredible bulletins that have been published in the New Orleans Advocate. I don't know, this is the one for, for Orpheus, if, if you want to take a look at these, and, and also, I believe, uh, Bacchus. Uh, we also had uh, this uh, shot of the, of the bulletin that uh, we had from Endymion, but all of these are in the uh, paper, and, and the, it's really a throwback to some of the old bulletins that used to be published uh, in the uh, uh, Times-Picayune, uh, I guess, in the day. Uh, also, uh, we had actress Catherine Talbot, who's getting ready to do uh, the um, lovely uh, Sex, Please, Now We're 60, uh, coming up at JPS at Teatro Wego next week, and uh, Carol uh, Gilcrease. We also had, remember, uh, Le Chat Noir, Biff and Barbara Motley, Barbara, oh, of course, being nice the proprietress, too. very mm -hmm. nice at the captain's platform. And also actor Donald Lewis and Diana Shortez started out uh, the first day, uh, uh, the big day, if you will. Uh, the uh, Mardi Gras was um, uh, it resplendent at St. Anne's uh, Parade we were mentioning. And also that was Lynn Drury there on the left, the uh, renowned singer. Al, uh, also I had a chance to meet up with uh, Teresa Devlin of the Historic New Orleans Collection. We viewed the uh, parade. You never know <laughs> who you're going to run into the street. Guess who else I ran into the street on Mardi Gras? Yes! Poppy. I recognize that crow. That crow was wearing an Excellent Poppy mm -hmm. Tooker costume, by the way. Uh, back to theater, though. Let's talk about what's going on. At the University of New Orleans last October, they had a, a production of Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo, which, uh, of course, starred uh, John Neisler. They're remounting that with help from the New Orleans Theater Association. The production is going to be held at, at Kenner Rivertown Theaters of Performing Arts. That's going to be this Saturday, tomorrow night. Don't forget, you have to go. It's free, uh, but you have to put in a reservation. And the phone number is there. Uh, if you take a look and you call in, you'll be able to see that. Also coming up at UNO Proper uh, at the Robert Nims Theater will be their production of Melancholy Play. One of my favorite authors, playwrights, is Sarah Rule, who did The Clean House, uh, Dead Man's Cell Phone, and if you remember in the next room, The Vibrator Play. This was her very first commercial play written back in 2001. I've never seen it, and, and I'm looking forward to it as well. That's Melancholy Play coming up at UNO. Now, the, the 
final secret is out now. The Tennessee Williams New Orleans Literary Festival knew where every one of the venues was going to be held except for one, and that was the Southern Rep production of Suddenly Last Summer. They now know it's going to be at the Ashe Powerhouse Theater, the brand new theater on the corner, if you will, of, um, I guess that would be uh, uh, Barone and uh, Felicity. Uh, it's basically a, a, a big, beautiful, redone uh, venue. Uh, it is now going to be, again, at 1731 Barone Street. And uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, they're selling tickets now. Uh, it was a big uh, a question mark as where it was going to be. They want to remind everybody we have increased security that's going to be there and, and a parking lot adjacent. So if you're uh, concerned about okay. the, the neighborhood, it's, it's really lovely and, and okay. fun. Great. And, uh, and also, what, don't forget about uh, Boudin. Okay. That's the next Southern Rep production. They're going to be doing something similar like to what the Teat Rex people do. They're giving out these boxes to everybody at the Southern Rep uh, uh, office on South Claiborne, and then people will then make their own music uh, altars, right. and, and it'll be used in the production uh, on stage. And now it's time for our picks. Sava, what, you, what is your band playing to close us out? High Society. Okay, well, I look forward to hearing that. Poppy? Happy Chinese New Year. Go to the Mary Queen of Vietnam Tet Festival in the East this weekend. Okay, Errol? Next year, Mardi Gras, February 9th, does not necessarily mean it's going to be colder. Uh, okay. you, you just can't be predict. It's going to also be in Demian's 50th anniversary. Okay, Alan? And a reminder that Margaret Belton will be starring in Always Patsy Cline at the Stage Door Canteen of the National World War II Museum. Uh, last time that they had the production, Diana Balston won for the Big Easy Award for Best Actress, so we're looking forward to seeing how Margaret Belton does the role. Okay, there's a big bluegrass performance in Bush, Louisiana this weekend, and we also definitely wanted to tell you, though, that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on W. YES, Latino Music in New Orleans. So we look forward to that and more information on that. But now we've got nose and also Rosie Neprovnik, tribute to Rosie tomorrow at the fairgrounds. Go to their website for more information on that. Uh, she's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful lady. And now let's hear more of Seva Vinay. Let's take a look. Good night. Support for Steppin' Out is made possible by local author Sarada Bonnet. In Notes of Forgiveness, Bonnet shares her childhood story as daughter of famed rockabilly singer Sherry Davis. Notes of Forgiveness, available in bookstores and at saradabonnet.com.